So let's modify what we have and uh, instead of uh, uh, I'm going to be okay so a would be equal to minus 2 times i right uh, plus sub shift of i to minus uh, to to minus 2 and plus this sub shift with 2 right any questions that's basically uh, changing this to this matrix and uh, for example if we if let's set a small n to be just uh, to make sure so let's set n n is equal to 10 and the paste what i get is uh what i get is this this matrix right is exactly what we wanted okay and then when i divide i should be dividing by 4 times delta x square right and uh, it's if kappa is equal to 1 then ddt is equal to a times u any questions so far no okay so then let's take a look at the solution so what if we have our u to be sorry u0 to be the same thing as before a cosine function okay so let's take a look at uh, uh what is my x now my x is uh yeah my x is still this uh a thou like a thousand thing so let's 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 make it uh uh, length 100 to start with and u0 is that and uh, let's close this and uh, simulate the solved ODE that comes out of the discretization okay um, oh sorry I shouldn't use ODE uh, I shouldn't use OD23 now because uh, my, my Jacobi is, is wrong, right? I don't have the correct Jacobi. So let's still go back to our OD45 case. And uh, uh, everything else is the same. All right. So, so basically the solution decays to zero, which is actually a little bit too fast for us to see. So let's, let's actually... Um, that's actually the correct behavior if you if you look at our uh, our previous if you look at uh, our previous case if you if you close it and uh, convection diffusion equation with zero advection and one dissipation remember something anything we draw is going to go to zero very fast right so so let's actually set a, a very set a much smaller dissipation coefficient for, uh, for us to actually see the behavior of our scheme so dudt let's actually set it to uh, 0.01 right 01 set kappa to something small let's see and uh, uh, let's reset our u0 and uh, perform the simulation again okay so that's now the behavior of the scheme Right, so so you can see the cosine wave just decays exponentially, just to smaller and smaller values. All right, so the this is we are using a uh, finite different scheme to solve a parabolic PDE, and parabolic PDE is actually very suitable for finite difference because even if you have a discontinuity, right, if you have the heat equation, the discontinuity is going to be gone almost instantaneously right any discontinuity is actually going to be smeared out immediately in a parabolic equation so just to give an example if you have uh, let's go back to our our previous case let's simulate this let's simulate convection diffusion equation 0 0.01 if we simulate something that is almost completely zero and having one spike at one grid point it'll be smearing out pretty quickly so let's see if our scheme can also reproduce that case and uh, a forewarning is that our scheme will have problem okay u0 is going to be let's just uh, multiply by zero to get everything to be zero and let's set u0 of uh, we have 50 to be equal to 1 okay we're just setting one grid point to be 1 
and now we are going to be using the same scheme to solve it again this is our solution what do we get I oh, want to fix the y-axis sure so we're gonna be plotted and uh, y lim to 0 and 1 right because our maximum is 1 and uh, uh, y lim is where uh, draw now was end oh it's already down to 0 oh, so let me let me redo this u0 is equal to u0 times 0 and u0 50 is equal to 1 let's do this with a fixed y limit that's what happens okay so we get a zigzag solution what is it two points over from your spike has a really large second derivative so it goes away from zero and then the point the next time set the point two more points from it has a non-zero second derivative well that's actually a very good thought uh, but this what happens here is a little bit different so this is actually a pretty famous a uh, problem in discretizing second order derivatives using the derivative of the derivative it's called the odd even decoupling if you look at this scheme if i is odd i plus 2 is odd i minus 2 is odd if i is even i plus 2 is even i is even i minus 2 is even the differential equations that involves the odd numbers is decoupled from the equations that are involving the even numbers that's exactly what we are seeing here right because we are only having one grid point to be equal to one right i think 50 so it's an even number all the odd points they stay zero they don't even know the even grid points exists all right so that's actually a something we really want to avoid i mean so so it's it's pretty well, once you've seen this it's pretty obvious uh, that we want to avoid in this case but if you are doing some convoluted uh, uh, derivation of schemes you may actually end up with a scheme that actually has the same behavior but it doesn't look like so on paper so the way to fix this is to realize that how about we only get rid of all the even, uh, get rid of all the odd points Increasing your delta x. Yeah, that increases my delta. Okay, so so if I want the same degree of freedoms, how about just get rid of all the odd points and decrease delta x by a factor of two, right? If we do that, what does the scheme look like? So let's actually call all our odd numbers to be like the half points, and then throw them away right what happens is my delta x is effectively shrinked into half of delta x all right and my i plus 2 now becomes i plus 1 and i minus 2 becomes i minus 1 so the scheme which is often used to discretize second order derivative is actually this well approximately equal to i plus 1 minus 2 ui plus ui minus 1 divided by just the delta x squared because if delta x is halved for delta x squared it's just the delta x squared all right so and uh, if you do taylor series analysis to this you are going to find out that this is actually more accurate than that because you are using kind of more immediate neighboring grid points it's kind of obvious after the fact but uh, it's in the beginning it's usually more natural to say okay the second order derivative is just the derivative of the derivative so i will just use that